الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. What a beautiful crowd! What a beautiful crowd! الحمد لله. My brothers and sisters, I want to begin by thanking Allah سبحانه وتعالى for allowing us to reach this momentous event, 50 years of history. We thank him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for allowing us to be part of this beautiful community of Muslims in North America. It's a moment of shukr, a moment of gratitude. A moment where we want to reflect on why we are here, what is our mission, what are we doing to accomplish that mission. My brothers and sisters, the theme of the convention, 50 years sharing Islam and serving humanity, tells you something. Tells you the type of work this movement has been engaging in over the past five decades. The topic for my talk today is in the footsteps of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In order to be able to reflect on that, I want you to reflect for a few moments on the beginning of Revelation. How Revelation started, what were the initial messages, because if you want to look at any work, any mission, any goal, then you start to look at the very beginning of that message. When did it start? How did it start? What were the initial thoughts? What were the initial messages? Again, the divine message that the Prophet ﷺ carried to mankind is much bigger than that. But a few clues can really give you a very clear understanding of what and how the message started. In the very beginning, the first revelations of Surah Al-Alaq, Iqra, Iqra bi ismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min alaq, Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram, alladhi ya'allama bil-qalam, a'allam al-insana ma lam ya'allam. According to Dr. Israr Ahmad, he says, this few ayat, the few ayat, the beginning ayat of Surah Al-Alaq actually spell out the nubuwa of Prophet Sallallahu So he was given prophethood at that time. But there is a difference between nubuwa and risala. And then he says that continuing on, after that initial message, there was a delay. And then the ayat of Surah Al-Muzzammil came. Ya ayyuha al-Muzzammil, qum al-layla illa qalila, nisfahu aw inqus minhu qalila. The Prophet ﷺ was given a very clear sign as to how and what is the source of inspiration and strength. Qum al-layla illa qalila, nisfahu aw inqus minhu qalila. Stand up, the for, stand up as much part of this night as you can, but maybe you can go to sleep for some. That was the source of strength for him. And then for a period of time, revelation stopped. After which, the next series of revelations came when the ayat of Surah Al-Muddathir came. Ya ayyuhal muddathir, qum fa'anthir, wa rabbaka fa'kabbir, wa thiyabaka fa'tahir, wa rujza fahjur, وَلَا تَمْنٌ تَسْتَكْثِرْ وَلِرَبِّكَ فَاصْبِرْ My brothers and sisters, if you only were to focus on this message, if you only read these ayat, you will have a very clear picture of what message was given to this man who we call Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
He was addressed directly. Ya ayyuhal muddathir. Oh, who is covering yourself? Qum fa'anthir. And to many mufassireen, the word qum in this ayah is very phenomenal. It's very profound because basically the details of Qumil layla illa qalila were already given to him. The source of strength was already described to him. And here now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was squeezing all that into the word qum. Rise. Fa'andir. So that covers that first part. Qum really encompasses all that was given in Surah Al-Muzammil. Qumil layla illa qalila, nisfahu wa winqus minhu qalila. That's covered in Surah Al-Muddathir in the second ayah when it says, Qum fa'andir. And then once you rise, then it's time for you to go and warn the people. Qum fa'andir wa rabbaka fakabbir. And I will really spare you the details of the linguistic beauty of this ayah. And you continue to look at these ayat and the choice of words, the choice of how the letters are placed. They are just amazing, but unfortunately we don't have the time. So for the sake of time, I will say that translates to, when you say, وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرُ It says exclusively and non-stop declare the greatness of your Lord. وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرُ Exclusively and non-stop declare the greatness of your Lord. And then, he's, and then and he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَثِيَابَكَ فَطَهِرُ And there are multiple interpretations of that. Some of the scholars will take it as a literal sense. That means have clean clothes and make sure that you are purified at all times. And others would say, let your company be purified. Let you be in a company of people who are always thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the righteous company, the surrounding that you surround yourself with. Because we're looking at all this, my brothers and sisters, from the context of now we, as the followers of this man, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is our responsibility? And what are, what, how do we follow his footsteps? Keep that thought process in mind, in your mind. And everything that is veiled, that is vile, that is sinful, that is bad, that is against the nature of human being, just stay away from that. And I wanted to reach the next ayah, the two words that come after this. Wala tamnun tastakthir. It will take hours just to emphasize the linguistic beauty here again, but I want to focus on Wala tamnun tastakthir. And if I were to translate that, regardless, regardless of how overwhelmed you are, regardless of how overworked you are, regardless of how you think this whole effort that's been given to you, this mission that has been given to you, regardless of how difficult it is, do not stop and do not cut off and do not discontinue the greatness and the great work that you're engaged in, which is the declaring of Allah's greatness, the maintaining of your purity, and standing up and warning people. My brothers and sisters, time is short, but I really want to emphasize to you that the mission that was given to the Prophet وسلم, the mission that he has passed to his followers on the day of Hajj, when he looked at the crowd, it was a, a crowd of 100,000 or plus. And he would raise his fingers to the sky and say, Allahumma hal ballagh, Allahumma hal ballagh, Allahumma hal ballagh. Oh Allah, be my witness 
that I have conveyed the message. And then he said something very profound. And he says, فَلْيُبَلِّغْ الشَّاهِدَ الْغَائِبِ فَلْيُبَلِّغْ الشَّاهِدَ الْغَائِبِ Those of you who are present today, he was talking to that crowd 1,500 years ago. And I'm talking to you today. فَلْيُبَلِّغْ الشَّاهِدَ الْغَائِبِ Those of you who are here today must deliver this message to those who are not present. My brothers and sisters, I want to conclude. This is that mission. This is that mission that we ask you to join us on this journey to deliver the message of this man, to deliver this divine revelation to every corner, every street, every, every household, every person, Ensure that this message reaches the extents of this world because that is the message that was given to our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.